Some of us get pretty good at judging descents by just eyeballing it. This is easy when you're not too high above the destination airport and it's a straight shot. But what if you were to hire crews like we are here on the way to Greenbrier coming over the Blue Ridge Mountains? We're at 8,500 feet in crews going down to an airport at around 2,300 feet. When should we start the descent? We learn a rule of thumb that for every 1,000 feet we need to lose, we should plan 3 miles of travel. So from 85 to about 2,500, we lose 6,000 feet. Times 3 is 18 miles. And maybe we add 3 or 4 miles to that for a buffer, so plan from around 20 miles out. This is fine, but we can use our onboard systems on the G1000 to help out. The simplest way to do it in VFR flight like this is to push the direct button on the PFD bezel. The box pops up and we scroll to altitude. We're going to set the pattern altitude, which we've looked up as 3300 feet. We hit enter and then we can select MSL. Let's say we just wanted to give it 1000 AGL, though we could do that too and select AGL instead of MSL. Just make sure to verify that the pattern altitude is indeed a standard 1000 feet above the field. Then we push enter and enter again to activate it. On the MFD, we see a new point on our route marked TOD for top of descent. This is when we'll plan to start our descent. If we pull up the flight plan on the MFD by pushing FPL, we see a new fix populated on the plan. It's called KLWB, which is Greenbrier, minus three, meaning a point along the route from our present position, which is three miles shy of the airport. We can adjust this again if we want, and we can also adjust the target altitude. Down in the active VNV profile, we see TOD again with a time counting down to our arrival. This is based on a descent angle. Here, it's 2.5 degrees. We can adjust this too. If we make it shallower, notice the TOD point slides up on our route, while if we make it steeper, the TOD has to be closer to the destination. The target vertical speed is listed too. This takes our ground speed and computes the descent rate we need in order to make 3300 MSL 3 miles shy of the airport. If we change our ground speed by slowing down, we see the target vertical speed change, and the same thing happens when we speed up again. On the G1000, we can also have our autopilot assist with the descent. When we're one minute from top of descent, the vertical track profile comes alive vertical track. with a guide bar to the left of the altitude tape. There's also a pink carrot on the vertical speed tape showing the same target vertical speed we saw before. To allow the autopilot to track this, we're going to use vertical nav mode, VNV. When we push this button, the autopilot status bar shows vertical path mode armed. The bottom altitude of 3300 is shown in magenta. Now, it's very important that we also bug our altitude to 3300. This is what actually controls the autopilot, so if we keep this on 8500, we won't go anywhere. When we count down to zero and the pink indicator gets to center, vertical path mode goes active and the aircraft automatically follows it down. This is very similar to vertical speed mode on the autopilot, only instead of us setting the vertical speed, the unit is flying the vertical speed dictated by that VNV profile and the pink carrot. Notice our actual vertical speed lays right on top of the carrot. You might see the altitude target arc populated on the MFD showing that we should arrive at 3300 feet just at our planned 3 mile offset spot. We're in hilly terrain, so if we want to stop our descent early to give us some room to clear the peaks before getting to Greenbrier, we could just push ALT on the PFD bezel to level off and manage from there. Just like any descent, when we approach 3300, we go into capture mode and we'll level off. From here, we should assess our pattern entry and other items prior to landing. This is of course just a basic VFR usage of vertical descent planning with the G1000, and it gets a lot more fun with IFR for things like arrivals. So if you're looking for more advanced training, consider our Transition to Glass Cockpit course, which you can check out at the Flight Insight website linked here or in the description today.